guys are here for uh, three days, right? So what, what you're learning, of course, is handgun basics, shit like that. Because if you can't hit the target, everything that you learn after that means nothing, right? So I'll agree with that. So it's just kind of the same with any kind of combatives that if you can't hurt people and knock people out, it's kind of useless of all the shit that you know. And if you can't hurt them quickly, because second man in is always coming in, right? Because it's never one-on-one. -on -one. So uh, we're going to do a little bit of uh, combative slapping. I just show you where to hit, how to hit hard, and maybe move a little. But uh, that could be tomorrow on the moving park. But we're going to try to get you enough where you can knock people out quickly. Depends where you hit them. I'm trying to get the, the mindset going of, I go first all the time. I'm a cheater. I cheat. I'll sneak you when you're not looking. I'll hit you from the back. I will do anything to win, because I have to, right? I have to win. I win, that's first of all, I win all the time. It doesn't matter what you're doing. I need to control everything. You control nothing. I'm not gonna let you control anything because I would be stupid to do that because that means I have to follow you. Defense is for suckers, right? Why would you defend and be on your heels when you can be the opposite? So it's the whole, Think of making space so you think you can work, but if I make space for him, for me, I'm making it for him too. I'm making space for him too, and well, that's not a good thing. Because he can move forward much faster than I can move backward. So you have to take space. You have to take it. And if you don't take it, they're gonna take it, right? So I, I know that you never were dropped anywhere and they say you're gonna drop, and then we're all gonna back up. And we're gonna give them space, right? Did they ever say that? No, because no one says that. Except in certain areas where they tell you to make space and back up and do your, get your shit out. Go forward, take space, get in his shoes, eat them like that old cartoon of the fish, getting the smaller fish, the bigger fish, you eat them, right? You go first, you cheat. Why in a self-defense situation am I always the one being choked and have to get out of a chokehold? How come I'm not the choker? I'm the choker. I'm not going to let him choke me. And I'm not going to pretend to get out of it. Right? Because he'll let me. I got two to three seconds before he really starts squeezing. I can't get out. So, no, we're not going to do it. I'm not even going to let him get there. I'm going to stick a blade in him if I can. Or I'm going to go first. Be the choker. Go first. Be the aggressor. You have to. Because if you don't control the fight, he will. Right? It's like when you were kids and the kid you were chasing and he was always going this way and you're just following him around and you never know which way he's going to turn. Well, you can't do that when you're in an altercation that's going to life and death. You, you, you have to make that happen, right? So your mindset has to change. Your mindset has to change is that I'm a cheater. I go first. Uh, you don't get a turn. It's my turn all the time. No turns for you. Not going to happen. I'm not going to let you. If there's any chance that we're going to have what we're going to have, I'm going to initiate it. Now, I know the legal ramifications. Just get a good lawyer and figure that out because I grew my own lawyer right there, so I'm off. But you can't let anyone hit you first. Would you let them shoot you first? No. Would you let them stab you first? No. So why would you let them hit you first? It's just not what you want because you have to fight back from that. And there's always a gap from going from defense to offense. If you're on defense and then you suddenly switch to offense, there's a gap in between that and you have to close that gap. If that gap takes too long, you're not going to get to offense. Because sooner or later, you have to become me. You have to become offensive. So just be offensive from the start. Because you have to get there already. Don't even go with it. Just be offensive. With that mindset, power and pain. Well, pain... Uh, Power rules, but pain is king, right? Pain is the king, but power rules because pain is temporary. So you have to learn how to hit hard enough to knock people out. And that's what we're going to do. We'll show you what we do, and we'll do a little bit of that today. Tomorrow will be mostly blade, probably all blade tomorrow, right? So we're going to get you moving a little bit, and we'll show you where you're able to knock people out. Pretty easy. How to move a little bit, and how to hit with some authority where you can knock people out, all right? Now, 
Doing that from the back is hard. So you have to change your brain when they're thinking that I will do anything to win. So hitting you from the back for me, is, it's easy. When you're not looking, I, I will hit you from the back if I have to, right? Because once we get into it, so Eric, stand up for a second. I go the same thing. <laughs> is this shit fair? <laughs> No, it's not. Get away from me. Oh, exactly. <laughs> now, come on now. Come on. Get up and look. Come on. Dude. They look at this. Is this fair? Am I supposed to think that we're going to have a fair fight? Why would I? It's just, that's, it's so far out of my imagination that I would have to have a fair fight. It's not going to happen. But that's a sports mentality. So you have to watch where you train. If you're spra training in a combative sport, you can't bring that mentality into the street. Because, and you will, until you really get lamped the first time and little white stars on that and you forget everything that you were ever taught and you just try to choke them until their head pops, right? Because with sports, there's rules. Are you ready? You ready? Oh, yeah. It's fair. Everybody's same weight. There's never two people. There's never weapons. Ever see weapons in the sport thing? For real weapons? No, there's no weapon. Right? You're on a nice, soft mat in a place that's well lit, air conditioned, two o'clock in the morning between two parked cars in the rain is way different than what you've been training in the gym. And when there's more than one person. And there's always more than one person. I would have to, you would see, so if, if Eric's walking, you would think one-on-one, -on -one, most people will leave him alone, but two or three people won't. Do so you always have to assume there's, there's more, right? And, and you know just from being and where you are, that's how it rolls. One on one, <laughs> one on one never happens unless it's a fluke, right? So one of those people or two need to get some serious injuries immediately. So you can't jab out, you know what I'm saying? Like the boxer thing, you can't jab out of a fight. You, got, you have to be serious. You have to maybe hit, hit hard enough to change things, right? Know your limits on being tired as far as your cardio, Throwing some punches. You don't need a lot of training. Okay? Um, if you talk yourself out of things, like um, when you, once you say, I'm tired, you're tired. Maybe you just told yourself you're tired. It's easy. If you've been in any kind of contest, mid fight, I'm tired now. Yeah, I am. We see, but tired, that's, that's really, you're not really tired. You're just telling yourself you're tired. And I go by this to um, so the Boston Marathon that we're running, and it's 26 miles. And at the end of the race, everybody's ass is dragging. Their ass is dragging. Bomb goes off, jackrabbits. Jackrabbits. Well, wait a minute, you were just dead tired, 26 miles, and now I can't even see this dude running down the thing. Because it's incentive, right? You see them going, oh, 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 oh wait, he's moving now. So it's all part of you telling yourself that you're tired. I can't do this. That's where the self-doubt comes in. Self-doubt is a poison you drink yourself. You do it. I just got to give you just a little bit of self-doubt. You'll do the rest. I don't have to do anything. Self-doubt is, and he stands up again, only because you're the tallest one. This is self-doubt on most people. Holy shit. Look at the size of this dude. My gun is not, I have a 380 on me. It's not enough. <laughs> right? It's self-doubt, right? So then don't carry a 380 if you don't doubt it. It's all up to you because ultimately you make these decisions, not anybody else. Power rules, otherwise you would all carry 22s. If power didn't re really mean anything, you would carry 22s because they're lighter and you probably get more to take. Okay? Pain is king, power rules. You got to go first. Be the choker. No one gets a turn. Everybody gets stabbed except your family. And if you have that mindset, well, then it's a lot easier to say, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much ready. But you have to change that mindset because you're already conditioned from being this big, of being nice, and, you know, we get into helping people and being helpful. But you don't have to be an asshole all the time, but you just have to be, I know my limits. I know the limits of the weapons that I'm carrying, and I don't have any limits as far as what I can do. So you need to already be, and the controversy is the escalation of force. If you start off at the top, 
You don't need to escalate. De-escalation is easy. Right? If I'm already here and I'm ready and I don't have to do that, it's easy. But if I'm not ready and we're at the lowest level of escalation and then he does this and you do that, he does this and this, oh, you're way behind the thing because he's, you know what I'm saying? So be on already. Be on already. Then there is no escalation. There's only de-escalation. It's easy. It's easy to de-escalate. Once you get into that, so I say, okay, I come in here every day, ready to kill people, I just don't. Well, that's easy. But I can't go in and say, I'm not ready, and I'm not ready to do that. And then something happens all of a sudden, and now you have to escalate. It's too hard. It's too hard to jump those barriers, because then you start thinking, oh, what if I did that? So, are you sure? Oh, I don't know. Is he that? Ah, that, that's where self-doubt comes in. Oh, there's two of them. Oh, shit, there's three of them. The self-doubt is easy. You do it to yourself. I'm not in shape. Oh, man, I'm tired. Oh, let's see. You do it. If I show you a blade and I hide it, it's like, oh, he's got a knife. Oh, what happens when you put a shot timer on people that are shooting? They go crazy. Imagine I show you a blade, then you, then you don't see it, and I'm about two feet away. I want to make you hurry. I want you to rush. I want you to hurry up and try to do whatever shit you're going to do. So you'll mess it up. Right? So it makes sense, right? That's why you take and you don't go forward. Because you'll rush going forward. But if we make space and I go backward, maybe you'll just take out your shit and just shoot me down. So easy because you don't have anything to rush about. I'm back. The threat is backing away from you. Right? So it's all about manipulation. You know, how to manipulate yourself and pass it on to other people. Right? How to be the, the hardest hitter that you can. And you don't need a lot of training for it. How to be good with the blade, you don't need a lot of training for it. I mean, this blade's pretty easy to use. Grab, just start slugging away. I mean, it's not more, more complicated than that, right? Just, you know, anything that, that we're going to teach or everything we're going to show you, demonstrate, take what's useful for the rest of the way. If it's no good for you, it's no good for you. This isn't the best thing in the world. But, but what you can't do is let people dictate and control any kind of a, a, an encounter. The only thing that you can control is the level of violence that's about to be set on you. You control the levels, right? Whether you need to be stabbed, shot, just punched in the face, that's the only level that you can really control. If I let you control the fight, then I am going to be out of my realm and be on my heels and be on defense. And everybody get that, right? Does it make sense? That if you control the fight, you have a much better um, chance of things going your way that what you're used to doing because if you're not used to doing it and and he is and he's controlling it so you're at the mercy of that person so that's a hard thing to do because and all the training that you do do and that you see is that you think it's like it's a give-and-take type of thing it's not like a one-way thing it only needs to be one way and it needs to be your way otherwise it's going to be it's going to be hard for you to come back from being screwed. You can't fix screwed. You can fight back from screwed. I say, well, what if he does that? Well, you're screwed because you weren't paying attention and you let him get too close. Right? When you let get people too close, you can't stop them. And then you're screwed. And then you have to fight back. And the old American way of fighting back off your heels, I'm pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and then I fight. No. Be the pusher. Right? Be the pusher. Because there's no rules. You, you're not allowed to quit, and there's no rules. You're not allowed to quit. Who says that? Your family says that. It's not me. Your family says, you, you can't quit. You're not allowed. You have to go home and take care of your family. You have people to take care of. You have a kid, you have a wife. You're not allowed to quit. And that's it. You can't do it. So we're going to get up, and we're going to do just a basic slap, no matter whatever experience that you had, whatever it was, doesn't matter. Don't care. We're, 